Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Tara Nelson from CTV Calgary, and we're very pleased to be one of your media sponsors again this year. And I'm thrilled to be back with you emceeing this event for another year and moderating the discussion as we look ahead to 2018. Thank you so much for taking your seats. On behalf of Calgary Economic Development, and uh, welcome to the Calgary TELUS Convention Centre and to Calgary Economic Development's 2018 Economic Outlook. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we are here today on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot and the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta. We're pleased to say Economic Development 2018 is presented by ATB Financial. We also have the generous support of Osler, Post Media, CTV, University of Calgary, HBI, Calgary Telus Convention Center, Hayworth, WestJet Airlines, FMAV, and Northern Backup. So thank you to our partners for making this possible. I'd also like to welcome a few of our special guests today, Robin Luff, NDP MLA for Calgary East, and from City Council, Peter DeMong. Now, this happens to be orientation day for the new members of council, so Mayor Nenshi is running a little behind. He'll join us a little bit later in the program, and he'll have a few words to say as well. We'll hear several distinguished speakers over the next two hours, but the stars of the show, of course, are two of Canada's leading economists. Glenn Hodgson, a senior fellow with the Conference Board of Canada, and Todd Hirsch, chief economist at ATB Financial. We'll get their perspectives on how the year ahead looks here in Calgary, and we'll also learn about the national and international forecasts. After their presentations, Mary Moran, the President and CEO of Calgary Economic Development, will join Glenn and Todd for a Q&A session. Dave Mowat, President and CEO of ATB Financial, will wrap up with his assessment of the economy, the province, and the city. And we will conclude with a draw for two tickets anywhere WestJet Airlines flies in North America. Now, you have to be present to win, so please stick around with us to the bitter end, but we promise that we will have everyone out of here by 1.30 sharp. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, in case you need to know, the washrooms are along the wall of the right wall here, and they are well signed. Should a fire alarm sound, please listen for instructions, but be prepared to proceed to the nearest exit in a calm and orderly manner. The exits are all very well marked as well at the front, back, and side of the room, so you would just proceed through the main hallway to the exits leading down the stairs to the outdoors and away from the building. Now, we would love it if you would join us on social media in the conversation today by using the hashtag Outlook18. It will also be the forum to ask questions of Mary and our economists at the end. And Calgary Economic Development will monitor that hashtag throughout the event, and hopefully we can get some of your questions asked today as well. So let's begin by welcoming the woman who would fight a bear for anyone in this room, Mary Moran, President and CEO of Calgary Economic Development. Thank you so much, Tara, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Calgary Economic Development's Economic Outlook for 2018. I'm so glad the mayor isn't here now, because uh, I'm going to pull out the long version of my speech, so, um, and not leave him enough time, so, um, but don't tell him. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge somebody very special in the audience. This person has humbly provided sage advice to Calgary Economic Development for several years. First, as the chair of the Economic Strategy Steering Committee, and now, for the last four years, as the chair of Calgary Economic Development. It is a true honour to work alongside of this man as he works diligently to make our community better and our organisation better. And I was very pleased that his long-time community efforts were finally recognised. Earlier this month, Lieutenant Governor Lois Mitchell bestowed him with the most distinguished award any Albertan can receive, the Order of Excellence of Alberta. Please join me in congratulating the most deserving person in the room, my friend and my mentor, Steve Allen.
Now at this year, at this event a year ago, Todd and Glenn expressed confidence in Calgary and Alberta and that they would move from a recession to a recovery. Their optimism proved to be prophetic. We rebounded from a two-year downturn and certainly got back to a better place and will lead the country in growth again this year. Although we're not out of the woods, certainly there are brighter days ahead. It was also at this event last year where I asked the audience to weigh in on the U.S. election, which was happening on the same day. And I hate to tell you, but you were all very, very wrong. In all seriousness, since the U.S. election, we have worked in a much more intense, with much more intense uncertainty. Uncertainty with NAFTA, uncertainty with immigration, uncertainty with U.S. corporate tax rates, just to mention a few. Now, some of this might just be uh, hyperbole, but some of it can actually be devastating to our economy. This combined with the uncertainty of the regulatory process to get pipelines approved or even pipelines completed, the opportunities of, as we have known them just a few years back are all seem so incredibly fragile. But I have to tell you, although these policy decisions and these political issues cause tremendous uncertainty and they require constant attention, it pales in comparison to the uncertainty that is being caused by rapidly changing technology. Technological uncertainty will have the much more lasting effect on all of our industrial sectors here in Calgary and Alberta. Let me explain why. The invention of the steam engine kicked off the Industrial Revolution, but that was an era of linear change and took generations to impact much of the world. Next, the development of electric power supported mass production, but the innovation was still quite linear. And then we hit the digital revolution in the late 1960s, and the use of electronics and IT automated production, but it took almost 50 years. And now, today, we're facing an unprecedented tsunami of dramatic disruption resulting from the convergence of three technological trends. The physical world, things such as 3D printing. The digital world, such as artificial intelligence and others. The virtual world, such as autonomous vehicles. We don't even fully understand the impact of one of these standalone technologies not to mention the convergence of three technologies coming together. Embracing leading edge technology or technologies and the associated uncertainty will leave massive opportunities in our industrial sectors. I can tell you, I watched this firsthand when I worked at TELUS. Coming from the wireless industry, Nokia spent an inordinate amount of time trying to manage the risk and they researched to see how they could create a telephone that was more compact but had more function. All of a sudden, with very little research, Apple came along and dropped down an iPhone. And they decided that in addition to the phone functions, they wanted to put a camera in it. And the world changed dramatically in how we live and how we work and use automation and digitization. So the next log logical question we should all be asking ourselves here is, is Calgary ready for the force of technological change and its inherent uncertainty? I'd say from where I sit, the answer to this question is both yes and no. Yes, in the sense that in spite of what politicians in Ottawa say, and the fact they're always talking about the Toronto-Waterloo corridors being the innovation centre in Canada, I believe Calgary has been the most innovative city over the last few decades. We do have the highest concentration of engineers and geophysicists here in Calgary. And we've come a long way from just drilling a hole and hoping for the best. We've advanced oil and gas extraction technologies to be more safe, more precise, and more predictable. We are definitely experts at managing risk here in Calgary and Alberta. We figured out how to go three kilometers down and five kilometers across and hit a bathtub-sized like target 
while only leaving a postage stamp size impression on the, above the land above. If that's not sophisticated and complicated innovation, then I don't know what is. But we have to figure out a way to shift from being great and probably the world's best risk managers to actually living with uncertainty and the unpredictability of converging technologies. In order to do this, we have to continue to strengthen the links between government, private sector, and post-secondary. But we also need to ensure that policymakers and innovators alike are able to adapt and are nimble enough to respond to the new technologies and the velocity of which they are presented. Now, I'm not saying it's all bad here in Calgary. We've actually made amazing progress over the last year. In fact, the e innovation ecosystem is building out at a very rapid pace. And certainly, Calgary Economic Development is trying to do its small part. We're supporting the rainforest movement. We attracted rocket space from Silicon Valley to Calgary. We support the nucleus, and we acquired Startup Calgary. However, as I sit here three years into this recession, I think about us anticipating the rate of change, and it feels like we need to move faster. Waterloo has been building its innovation reputation for 40 years, and I would say given the pace of technolog technological changes, Calgary doesn't have 40 years to spare. And that's why, between now and next spring, Calgary Economic Development is going to engage the entire community and update the 10-year economic strategy for Calgary, which is named Building on Our Energy. It's been five years since it was last uh, updated, and I'm pleased to announce that almost 90% of the initiatives outlined in that strategy are underway. But we truly need a strategy that is more reflective of how Calgary can work faster and more collaboratively in order to survive and thrive in the uncertainty of the new economy. And if we are successful, we can earn the brand of the most innovative city in Canada. Now, speaking of uncertainty, I'm not sure if you heard, but Amazon put out a headquarter RFP. I thought I'd take the time, now that you have salad, to uh, tell you about how we approached this opportunity. First, I want to be clear. This is a headquarter office RFP. They will start with 5,000 headquarter functions. They need executives, they need financial people, they need legal people, they need HR, they need IT, and they need engineers. Sounds a bit like Calgary. The Calgary region, like many other cities, submitted a 200-plus bid book that included everything from real estate options to talent profiles to profiles on our post-secondaries to our K-12 uh, education system to commercial opportunities to potential incentives. We were also asked to outline a myriad of other things, from crime rates to fiber networks to cell so service coverage to transit rates, to bike lanes, to flight schedules. I can pretty much tell you anything about Calgary now. In fact, the only thing that we didn't have that they asked for was a non-stop flight between Calgary and Washington. DC, that is. But the good news is, we know the good people at WestJet and we know their willingness to work with us. Gosh, we even lined that bid box with the Canadian treasure, the Hudson Bay blanket. Because of course the Hudson Bay started by moving goods, just like Amazon. We thought of everything, but we knew it would be a competitive bid. 47 cities actually met all the criteria outlined in the RFP. And shockingly, 238 cities and towns put, submitted a bid. Given that there is this external perception that Calgary and technology do not belong in the same sentence, we knew a bid book would not be enough. So we decided that in order to break through the noise and in the hopes of getting our bid book on the short list, that we needed to be edgy, we needed to be self-deprecating, 
and we needed to create an honest marketing campaign. We had four goals with that marketing campaign. One, get the attention of the Amazon executives. Two, impress the Amazonians, the employees, because they get to weigh in on what city the next headquarters will go to. The third thing we wanted to do is drive media coverage for Calgary. And the fourth thing we wanted to do is make all of you in the room and all Calgarians very proud. And if we were successful, we also wanted to make them laugh. We worked at breakneck speed with several Calgary companies, EY, Critical Mass, Joe Media, Evans Hunt, Mammoth VR, and Kaordex. We wanted our campaign to come across like Calgarians, accessible and friendly. So we addressed them by saying, hey, Amazon. And our first key message to them was, we will work tirelessly to bring you to Calgary, to keep you here, and to integrate you into the community. So we led with this. Hey, Amazon, not saying we'd fight a bear for you, but we totally would. That was funny, you guys. <laughs> we also wanted Amazon to know that we are a welcoming city and a meritocracy. No one cares here who your parents were, what your ethnicity is, where you went to school, or what your sexual orientation is. So building a labor here, pool here in Calgary, unlike the US, will be easier. We also wanted them to know that people will come for the jobs, but like many of us, they will stay for the lifestyle. Now I can assure you, nobody actually fought a bear at Calgary Economic De Development, but we certainly did think about it. In fact, our efforts didn't stop here at the campaign. We then invaded Seattle. We have a short video of how the night before the bid process or the bid submission was due went down and the day of the bid submission uh, in Seattle. Now in the week after the bids were submitted, Calgary had over 150 million media impressions, including the New York Times, the Financial Times, the Seattle Times, a couple of times, CNN, Forbes, Business Insider, Business Week, and many more. We actually even made it to the tech magazines. And we know that this effort will pay off for years to come. The shortlist decision will take about six weeks, so we also have a sustaining digital campaign, including this short video spot. Hey, Amazon. Rumor has it you're looking for a new place to live. Moving can be such a bear. I know what you're thinking. Calgary? Really? Isn't it way up north? Well, okay, sometimes it gets a bit chilly, but we've got loads of sunshine and it's a good excuse for cuddling. Not to mention, other mountains are so jealous of our mountains. And all the best people are here. And flights from Seattle? One hour direct. We're basically neighbors. Our commutes are short, and bike lanes are everywhere. And wait for it, our office space is ready to go right now. You could literally move in tomorrow, and the coffee would be hot. As Calgarians, we do one thing really well. We invite people to our city to plant roots and grow great things. So we're not saying we'd fight a bear for you, but we totally would.
to tell you the most commonly uh, asked question that I get right after they ask about are you doing an incentive is why the bear? The answer is simple. Although the mayor has been the catalyst for perception change for Calgary for many years, he was busy campaigning. So we went with the bear. And frankly, bear, mayor, what's the difference anyway? <laughs> Sorry, Chima. See, I knew we invited him late for a reason. The community support was amazing, though. We had over 100 letters from CEOs that we submitted in the big bid package. And then we also had about 1,500 people participating in our crowdsourcing uh, community, online community, giving us all kinds of ideas on how to pitch Amazon. For me personally, hearing almost 19,000 Calgary Flames fans at the Saddle Do Dome chant, come on Amazon, sent shivers down my spine. But I want to be clear. Calgary economic development is not just focused on the home runs and Amazon. Although it was really nice to be part of a rather large team that secured Amazon's fulfillment center in the Calgary region last week, resulting in 750 jobs, we're not putting all of our eggs in one basket. We, in fact, I've told this group, this, uh, this audience before, that we have well over 200 leads uh, in our pipeline right now. And over the last two years, Calgary Economic Development Team has been very focused. We have successfully attracted and supported the expansion of over 90 companies at which have created 5,000 jobs in the region. And I can't say enough about the incredible hard work, dedication, and determination of our team. And in fact, this is the first time they've been out since the Amazon bid today, so say, make sure you welcome them. But I'm also pleased to announce that we have a new member joining us. Bruce Leslie, the Executive Director of the Conference Board, will be joining us as the Vice President of Trade and Investment Attraction, effective November 20th. So just a big round of applause and a welcome for Bruce Leslie. <laughs> Calgary Economic Development strongly believes that Calgarians will build the future of the city. The renowned entrepreneurial spirit is going to be more important now than ever it ever has been. And our commitment to collaborate will keep creating certainty in a very uncertain world. By working better together, I'm confident that Calgary will soon be well known as the most innovative city in Canada. Thank you very much. Now, before you uh, get your food, so I'm going to hold you hostage here for a little bit, we have a little exercise because I want to ensure that all of you have an opportunity to participate in the Amazon bid. So I'd ask you to take out your phones and pick your favorite, f don't get on Tinder or anything like that, <laughs> but pick your, favorite, phone, your pit favorite picture of Calgary, and if it's this event, that's okay too, and text uh, and send a text, or sorry, send a, a tweet to Amazon. And we ask you just to include a couple of things. Why it is your favorite spot, but also why Amazon would love it. And you can use any of these hashtags, HQ2, Amazon YYC, love YYC, or fight a bear for you. And preferably all four if you can. I can tell you, I met with Amazon last week and they had said to me, Believe me, Mary, when you launched this campaign, there were lots of emails flying around within Amazon. And they also sent me an email on the weekend that uh, was from one of their executives sending a tweet saying, City of Calgary, we can't wait to fight a bear with you. Thank you very much.